Enjoy this free episode from My Outdoor TV. Buckle up, get ready for a fun ride. With over 20,000 episodes of the best outdoor shows with your free trial, we're the home of the adventurous. We're in a bad spot. We need help. The champions. When it's your time to win, you can't stop it. The legends. There are bigger things happening out here than just shooting bullets at end. Start your free trial of My Outdoor TV right now. This season on The Foul Life, join us as we take a deep dive into one state during a year like no other. A state that not many would identify as a hunter's dream. A state whose deep blue city centers dominate most new cycles. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Make sure everybody's unloaded, barrels up. This state is host to one of the most vital and prolific flyways on Earth. Each year, more than one billion migratory birds follow its path. Yet this number is only a fraction of what it once was, and diminishes each year as more land is urbanized and water resources diverted. All kinds of shorebirds are getting it as well. The migration from the Canadian provinces and the breeding grounds is on. We've seen specks come in here today. Yes, sir. We've seen new Canada geese come in here today. Yeah. So when you have a body of water affected like this, is there anything that the agencies can do to prevent the... Because the, the, for the next 30 days, you're going to be reaching temperatures of Absolutely. potentially 90 degrees. Absolutely. Same, same problem without a huge water flow coming into this place. We're a long way from being healthy in this marsh to the point where Every migrant that's coming down here that's stopping in this place is certainly susceptible to botulism. Join us this year as we take a hard and close look at some of those issues and the organization at the forefront of making sure the flyway remains intact. Sing until the darkness it is lifted. We'll discuss the many complexities of managing this flyway and the science Cal Waterfowl is conducting to back up the policies and regulations that can be both pro-hunter and pro-conservation. So a lot of people are wondering, you know, why, why are you guys targeting pintail? Why are you banning pintail? For the California hunter, pintail are a pretty important bird. When you're out hunting, that's, that's the bird you're going to see quite a bit, you know, depending on the habitat. A lot of guys hunt the rice, and, you know, they're kind of a rice country, rice habitat bird. The regulations right now, you can only shoot one pintail. You know, it's kind of deceiving if you're in California because California winters about 35% of the actual continent's population. So your, your vision's kind of skewed. You see a lot of pintail, but continentally wide, their numbers are, are actually pretty low. You look out in this field and you see just thousands of pintail, and you're like, man, how hard could this rocket netting be? But most people don't realize that we have like a 120-foot section um, where there's two nets actually right next to each other. And you have to get these birds, you know, within three to four feet of the edge of that net, or they'll have enough time to jump out and get away. So we bait it real heavily, and these birds start to find it. It's kind of funny how it changes the behavior, because all of a sudden this big pile of bait shows up, and they act real skittish around it. Go in there, and they start feeding really hard, and it's almost like they know something's not right, and so they kind of spook out and push off and gather their thoughts again, and then they kind of hit it again. And, it's like they, they know it's not right, but they just can't resist it. We hope you've enjoyed this free episode. To continue watching, start your free trial now.